Hello, family and friends. We are baking here in Las Vegas with temperatures reaching 120 degrees. We are in the dog days of summer with sweltering heat across the country. And July is typically the hottest month of the year. And with climate change, we are seeing higher temperatures more often and of longer duration. Being exposed to extended periods of time in heat and humidity without relief or sufficient fluid intake can lead to various heat-related illnesses and even death. Between May 2023 and September 2023, the rates of emergency room visits for heat-related illnesses substantially increased across several parts of the country compared with previous years, especially among males and adults ages 18 to 64. The CDC reported 119,605 people visited the emergency room for heat-related illness between January 1st and December 31st of 2023, which was a six-year high. Heat-related deaths have been increasing in the U.S., with approximately 1,600 occurring in 2021, 1,700 in 2022, and 2,300 in 2023. And the vast majority of emergency room visits for heat-related illnesses occur in July and August. According to the Department of Energy, nearly 75% of heat-related deaths last summer were in five southern states, Arizona, Texas, Nevada, Florida, and Louisiana. These five states accounted for 61% of the nation's death due to heat over the past five years. Heat-related illnesses occur when your body is not able to get rid of heat effectively. When your body gets really hot, it depends on sweat evaporation to release the heat. If the heat coming into your body is greater than the heat leaving your body, your core temperature will increase, putting you at risk for a heat-related illness. There are three heat-related illnesses, heat cramps, heat exhaustion, and heat stroke. Heat cramps are the least threatening, and it usually happens when you have been physically active in hot weather. Muscle pain and tightness are the classic symptoms. Treatment includes moving the person to a cooler area, removing excess clothing, placing cool towels on the skin, fanning the skin, gently massaging and stretching the muscle, and having the person drink cool water or a sport drink at least every 15 minutes. Next, there is heat exhaustion, which occurs after exposure to long hours and high temperatures typically while engaging in physical activity, along with insufficient fluid intake. Symptoms include clammy skin, pale skin, dizziness, decreased urine output, dark color urine, fatigue, rapid breathing, and an accelerated yet weakened pulse. It is important to note that with heat exhaustion, one's neurological status is preserved. Treatment is the same as mentioned for heat cramps. Lastly, there is heat stroke, which is the most severe of all heat-related illnesses. And it is life-threatening. It requires emergency treatment, and if not treated expeditiously, it can quickly damage your brain, heart, and kidneys. It occurs when the body fails to modulate its temperature, and as a result, the body temperature increases quickly while the body's sweating mechanism stops working. Therefore, the body has no way of cooling itself. Typically, the body temperature increases above 104 degrees. It is frequently the result of overexertion in a hot and humid environment. What distinguishes a heat stroke from other heat-related conditions are mental status and neurological changes such as confusion, agitation, irritability, disorientation, headache, seizures, difficulties with coordination and movement, 
and loss of consciousness, and even coma. The treatment includes calling 911 first and applying the same treatment for the other heat-related illnesses mentioned above, with the addition of applying ice to the underarms, wrist, and groin areas. The key is to cool the person by whatever means you have at your disposal. That's it for today. Join me next week when we'll look at risk factors for heat-related illness and tips for prevention.